Folksonic. Hey everyone, just taking a quick 15 seconds to let you know that my new book, The Fitness Mindset, Eat for Energy, Train for Tension, Manage Your Mindset, and Reap the Results, which hit the bestseller list within 24 hours of its release, is now available to buy on Amazon. So if you're looking for everything you need to get into incredible shape and the mindset to keep it forever, be sure to check it out. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy this week's episode. <laughs> Welcome to Brian Keane Fitness Podcast, where we talk everything fitness, nutrition, and mindset with your host, Brian Keane. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Brian Keane Fitness Podcast. We talk everything fitness, nutrition, and mindset to help you with your goals. Today's episode is going to be a little bit more of a lifestyle episode. I got such incredible feedback from six or seven episodes ago about the tips that I would give my younger self. So I'm going to do a full podcast today on the top five tips I would give to my 18-year-old self. Um, And I think this is applicable for anybody that regardless of what stage you're at in your life, whether you're a 16, 17-year-old listening to this, whether you're 27, 28, trying to figure out what you need to do or should do with your life, or whether you're 40 or 50, there's tips here that I think would possibly will land and and resonate with certain people. Um, So I'll share the ones that I would go back and offer myself that I still live by to this day. Um, And for any of you following my Snapchat, BrianK019, you've heard me get quite animated on a couple of these topics uh, because they're ones that are quite close to home. Um, So this episode, I'm going to talk about the exact tips that I would give my younger self um, and basically my reasoning why. Um, Generally, your mess is your message and a lot of these tips were down to me having listened to to the poor advice that was offered to me or me getting in my own head and making up stories about reasons why I shouldn't do the things that I want to do. So hopefully you guys will get a lot of value from this episode. Okay, so number one, and this one is, I'm going to kick it off strong because It's the one that I live by to this day and I've had several rants on Facebook Lives and Snapchats about this because it's one that's quite close to my heart and that is don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something. Um, We go through our entire lives with people telling us we can't achieve something, we can't leave our job, we can't find a better partner, we can't get into a better relationship, we can't make that sports team. We'll go through our entire lives and people are going to tell you that you can't do something. I remember when I was in school, um, and I was a very, very poor student until I went to third level, um, and I excelled. I had really, really bad dyspraxia, so my handwriting was dreadful, so it lent itself to really poor exam results until I got a laptop when I went to college. Um, But I was told from teachers that if I didn't go pro in one of my sports, that I was going to be a loser, I was going to be on welfare. Um, And I remember my head teacher, my principal, pulled me into an office one day when I got kicked out of class for causing trouble and and not doing the assigned task. And I, I spoke about this in my book, in the introduction of my book. And he told me, he was like, don't ever let other teachers or other people's opinion become your reality. Um, and again, it's a, it's been said that teachers and great teachers can lead people to do great things. Um, and again, I'm only saying in the context of my own life, but I'll never forget that conversation. That was the first time in my entire life when I had an adult other than my mom tell me that I was going to be okay and tell me I was going to do something. And from that day forth, I realized that what other people have and their opinions and their perspectives of you is their opinion. It's their perspective. It's the way they see the world and that doesn't have to become your reality. And that normally manifests itself in people telling you, you can't do something. The only reason people will tell you you can't do something is because they're afraid to do it themselves. They've let fear or they've let some story they've told themselves stop them doing it. And by pulling you back, it makes them feel better about themselves, either on a conscious or subconscious level. And you've got to be so clear that when somebody tells you you can't do something that's their perspective that's their opinion of that moment in time opinions change perspectives change i love the americus radius quote that everything we hear is an opinion everything we see is a perspective and that goes through for all through life in every aspect people will tell you you can't do something because they may truly believe it it may be coming from a place of hate it may be coming from a place of jealousy it may even be coming from a place of love which is probably the hardest one to deal with when you have family members telling you you shouldn't do something because they're afraid that you'll end up with no job, that you'll end up with no relationship, with no partner, that you'll end up failing and get crushed. All of these things can come from love and that can stop you because you're letting other people tell you you can't do something. You're letting that story get into your head and it's convincing you that you shouldn't do it. I've spoken on other podcast episodes in the past and I'll use myself because you're your own best example. I remember when I left and for some of you that have been following me for a while, some of you may be new to the podcast, 
I know the book went bestseller on Amazon. A lot of people have funneled into my ecosystem. So some of you may be hearing this for the first time, but my background was as a primary school teacher. I was a a qualified primary school teacher. I thought senior infants for a year. I thought third class for a year and I thought fifth class for two years. So I worked in that sector and I wanted to make the jump into fitness so badly. Um, I wanted to, all I ever wanted to do was this, was making podcasts, making videos, doing Q and A's, helping people become stronger versions of themselves. That's all I ever wanted to do. But I was told that we're going to teaching. It's a safe job. There's good holidays. There's good pay. And I, and I went with that because that's, you do watch the normal path and what society and what your family and what your friends tell you to do. And I had no problem with that. However, when I made the jump out and I quit teaching and left teaching, I went in to start my own fitness business and I had no social media. I had no following. I had no clients. I came home. I was on welfare. This was not long ago. This was three and a half years ago. I came home. I had to move into my mom and dad's room at home. I was driving my sister's little Toyota Yaris um, that I didn't know was going to work every morning and I was on social welfare because I had no job but I had a vision of starting a fitness business and that's what I wanted to do. And the only reason I share that is because I had family members, people close to me telling me that I was a fucking idiot for leaving teaching to become a fitness person. They were like, there's no money in fitness. You can't make a living out of it and you left a great job. You're an idiot. I literally had family tell me that. And now when things have changed in three and a half years on, I have a podcast that gets 50, 60,000 downloads a month. I have my social media following. I have a thriving business. I have a best selling book. All of these things, and I'm not saying these to be brag or give ego or, ego or bravado, these are a fact. And those same family members come back and are like, I knew you were going to do amazing. I knew you were going to make it. I was like, you fucking didn't. You were the person that called me an idiot. You were the person that called me an idiot for leaving a, a good job for trying to do something in fitness because it was my passion, it was my longing, it was the thing I wanted to do. And the only reason I made that jump was because my mum made me. I came home and I remember I was 24 years old. I came home from my, I was six months into my first teaching job and I spoke about this in the book when I was at the height of my anxiety and worry and stress and I fucking hated my first teaching job so much. Um, I just didn't understand the English system. I was in a school where I didn't have a lot of friends, even though there were some amazing people in there. Um, and I just wasn't in a good place in my life. And I remember coming home on a Christmas Eve, bawling my eyes out to my mother, telling her how much I hated my job and how much I hated my life. Looking back now, it's ridiculous because I had a roof over my head. I had a job, but it's relative. You know, we let anxiety catch us. We let worry catch us. We let stress catch us. And it's all relative to each person. But I bawled my eyes out with, as a 24-year-old man to his mum. And mum was like, right, send your principal an email, tell him you're quitting, and she enrolled me in a fitness instructor course. And I always tell people, I'm like, if you ever think, if I've ever done a video or ever done a podcast or ever done anything that's ever helped you, you can thank my mum. Because without that push, I never would have gone into it. I never would have made the jump. And even though I had other people tell me I was an idiot, she was like, well, this is what you want to do. She always grew up with me and my sister. My sister is a PhD and she's a lecturer in Northumbria University in, in the UK and she always told both of us if we were happy cleaning the streets go clean the streets and, and that was the philosophy that I took into it I was like well do you know what I'd rather make you know 250 euro a week working with people in fitness than make five or six hundred a week teaching that was my philosophy because of what was instilled in me but I had other family members who flipped back and told me, oh yeah, I knew you were going to make it because the perspective had changed. The opinion had changed. There was more relative information. When they see your book as an Amazon bestseller, when they see your podcast with 50, 60, 70,000 downloads a month, when they see your social media, when they see your business, when they see your new car, when they see your house, all of these things, opinions change because the reality has now changed and they will change their opinion. We go through our whole lives letting people direct their opinion and let it become our reality because we listen to what they have to say. If you know there's something you want to do and you know you want to quit your job or you know you want to be in a better relationship or you know you want to go and achieve some great thing for you, that may be being the best parent you can be. That may be starting your own business. That looks different to each person. But I'm telling you, letting people tell you you can't do something is going to be the biggest detriment to that. I am eternally grateful that I had my mum make with that push. And she's the first one to say when I'm making big jumps, she'll have that fear of being like, right, just be careful for what you're doing so sometimes they can be telling you not to do something out of love and that's something you have to be able to catch as well and I'm very 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 grateful that I have that in my life and I'm aware some people don't have that and um, but 
I am telling you firsthand, people are going through your whole, going to go through your whole life telling you you can't do something. You cannot let their opinion, their perspective become your reality. If that's the case, you are never going to achieve what you want to achieve, whatever that looks like relatively to you. The number two tip then I would give myself is, one of my favorite quotes of all time is the Jim Rohn quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, and I, there's a lot of quotes and memes that I particularly like. Some have been ruined from Instagram and social media. Um, however, that one is true. That's one that I love because if you hang around, and there's even been studies to show this, if you hang around with five alcoholics, you're likely to become the sixth. If you hang around with five millionaires, you're likely to become the sixth. If you hang around with five fitness people, you're likely to become the sixth. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I know this. When I was in the party scene, when I was in the drug scene, when I was in the drinking every weekend and that heavy party lifestyle scene, my other five people were all in the scene as well. We were all teachers and we were all living for the weekend as weekend warriors. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you love doing and you're happy working your nine to five Monday, Friday, and you live for the weekend and you love that lifestyle, then you've won. I'm not speaking to those people. I'm speaking to the people who think there's more, who want more. I felt unsatisfied with that. There was a, a longing in me and a deep emptiness is the only description I can give every Sunday evening when I was recovering from a hangover and I'd work on Monday I was like this isn't what I want for my life this isn't what I want to do but I didn't know how to get out of it because my five people were like that it's so important that you are at your circle and the people that are in and around you if you're hanging around with negative people and five of your closest network you're the people if you think now who are the five people you spend the most time with and um, whether that's through social media, whether that's through one-to-one -one contact, whether that's through family, whether that's through housemates, who are those people? The people you spend the most time with, you're gonna become the average of those people. It's not a coincidence that when I'm speaking in places and I talk to people that I instantly connect with certain people because they're like, I've consumed all of your content. I've watched all of your podcasts or listened to all of your podcasts, watched all of your videos, and I instantly connect with them because we have very, very similar life philosophies. You don't have to spend physical contact with that person. The people that I read, it's why I love reading my favorite authors, because you're, you're listening and consuming their thoughts. You're spending time with them, following the right people on social media, and consuming that information counts towards your five people. That and the people you physically spend the most time with. So ask yourself, if there's an area of your life that you're struggling with, and I break my life and happiness into the four quadrants, health, wealth, love, and fulfillment, my health, my overall, how I'm feeling, how my body's reacting, my energy levels, my wealth, my bank account, my, um, my love, my relationships, um, my daughter, my mom, my family, um, and then my fulfillment, what I'm doing with my life in terms of my non-job, making podcasts, writing books, and all of these things that I get to do that I'm so happy and grateful for, and I break my life into those four quadrants. If there's a part of your life or your week Audit who you're spending the time with. If you want to be more positive, if you want to earn more money, start spending time with people who are high achievers and earning more money. If you're unhealthy and very unhappy with the way you look and the way you feel and your energy levels, go spend more time with fitness people who have high energy, that are training every day and are doing those things. You can audit your circle to make yourself stronger in all aspects of your life, but that goes both ways. If you're spending all your time with negative people who are constantly moaning, who hate their job, who see every thing as half glass half empty you're going to become that sixth person because that's the way life works we're wired our motor neurons our mirror neurons in our brain the way we're wired through evolutionary psychology to surround ourselves with the people within our tribe and the people we're around with we become like them we have our mirror neurons that we copy people that are literally ahead of us or around us in our immediate circle understanding that psychology can allow you to hack it it was my biggest step when I realized that, do you know what, the people I'm spending the most time with are having a very, very negative impact on the way I feel about myself. And that's on me. I'm taking full ownership and you need to take full ownership of that, that that's on you. You decide who you spend the most time with. You prioritize who you spend your evenings with. You know, you, geographically, you may be limited, but you can go plug in a podcast. You can plug in an audiobook of your favorite author. You can do all of these things to hijack 
the negativity that's around you, but you have to make that decision and just understand that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That is one of the main things I would tell my 18 year old self because I had to learn that the hard way and the trial and error. And I would never change my path because your mess is your message, but it's something that if I could go back, I would definitely have offered myself that advice. And the next bit then is something I talked about in my book, The Fitness Mindset, and it's something that I probably offered to more people than any other piece of advice. Um, and this is definitely one I would give to myself going back. You are better off being at the bottom of the ladder against the right wall than nearly at the top of the ladder against the wrong wall. And I'll explain on that. Um, there's a tragedy, one of the biggest tragedies in life is getting really, really good at the wrong thing. Um, and sometimes we get caught in the victim of, well, I'm good at this, maybe that's what I should do. Um, and that, again, I'll use myself and my own story because it gives context to this answer, is I was a good teacher. I was a very good teacher. I was, I'm very aware I have a strong way of communicating. I was able to build a lot of rapport with the kids that I worked with and I loved the teaching element of my job. I largely do that now, which is on a bigger scale and is aimed more in terms of mindset, lifestyle, fitness, um, but it's still something that, that I hold very, very close to my heart. However, that was the ladder leaning against the wrong wall. Um, I was four years into teaching and I was climbing that ladder pretty quickly. Um, if you're that type A personality, you, you kind of want to better yourself all the time. And I was gradually climbing that ladder where I'd have probably been a vice principal in a couple of years. I would have been a head teacher or a principal within six, seven, eight years. But I would have been at the top of the ladder against the wrong wall. Um, I would have kept climbing and getting better at something that I wasn't truly passionate about in terms of spending the rest of my life doing. Um, and again, as I said, the victim of staying in a position or a job in this context is, yeah, it's fine. Because if you hate something um, and you absolutely despise what you do, you despise the person you're spending your time with, it's easier to make that cut. You can get very, very caught by yeah it's fine yeah it's okay yeah i don't mind it and that's how my teaching job was like the teaching that my last job i enjoyed it i, I liked working with the kids and um, i really liked my school i was working with great people the parents were amazing um but it was it was good it was fine Whereas what I do now, I would do for free. I literally jump out of bed and feel like I'm tap dancing to work every day because I love what I do. There's a big difference there. And that can happen with a lot of people. And again, the context is going to be different and where you are at your stage in your life, this may be resonating and landing in a different way. If you're going to a job that you're like, oh, it's fine. Or I'm in a relationship that you're like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, they're fine. They'll do. Or whatever way that channel looks like for you, that's going to be one of the biggest things that you need to Pull yourself out of and see, is this truly what you want to do or who you want to be with or what you want to spend the rest of your life thinking about? Because thoughts become things. The thoughts you put into your head, the actions you take will create the life that you have. So it's so important that you have your ladder against that right wall. And it was very, very similar, as I mentioned, when I came back and moved back into my mom and dad, driving my sister to the Yaris and had to go on social welfare. I was at the very, very bottom but it was the ladder against the right wall. I wanted to be in the fitness industry. I wanted to be a personal trainer. I wanted to work with people. Now my business is online and I make, I do lots of other things with speaking and writing, uh, podcasts and lots of different things that I do now, but it was the ladder against the right wall, but I was at the very, very bottom. I had no clients. I had no social media. I had no following. I had no income. I had nothing, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And at the end of the day, when you don't let fear stop you, and I love the acronym for fear, false evidence appearing real, when you don't let the fear stop you, the fear of failure or the fear of success, because they're two very, very real things. And people know about the fear of failure. Well, what if I ha what if I get it? What if it happens and I can't handle it? You know, they're things you need to catch yourself with because the fear of failure and at the, the truth, and I've spoken about this in a video recently, that when you change your entire perspective and reframe failure as one other way that didn't work and is a feedback in terms of how you're going to move forward, you are going to excel in any area or direction in your life, whether that's getting into amazing shape, whether that's switching careers, whether that's finding a better relationship or a better partner, your direct feedback, the worst workouts, the worst diets where you rebounded out the other side, the worst dates you've been on, the horrible relationships where you wish you had never been in it, the job that you despise going to, that's direct feedback Failure, direct feedback on what you know to look out for next time. When you reframe that entire thought process, you can move in any direction because you know you're either going to win or you're going to learn from the, the obstacle or whatever it is that that perceived 
failure was and it's going to move you one step closer to whatever it is that you're looking to achieve and when you reframe that you don't mind being at the bottom of the ladder against the right, the right wall because you know step by step I love the Charlie Munger quote that step by step we get ahead and not necessarily in fast spurts and you're better off being at the bottom of the ladder against the right wall because the truth is an inanimate there's a law of physics an inanimate object will stay at rest until moved by an external source the same way as momentum creates momentum it's a law of physics that a moving object will continue to move unless stopped by an external source if you're moving up that ladder step by step it doesn't matter how low or how relatively behind you seem to be if it's trying to build a social media if it's trying to leave your job get a better relationship go on more dates to find out and get the feedback whatever that looks like for you the ladder against the bottom of the right wall is always going to serve you than being three quarters of the way up against the ladder against the wrong wall and I'm speaking as somebody that did that I've had friends I've had teachers I've had people I've worked with that have had similar issues and I've used this analogy and I wrote about it in my book because it's something that I probably offered more than anything else and it's something that if I could go back to my 18 year old self I would have told myself then go out and do your fitness because I knew I knew I wanted to work with sports people I knew I wanted to work in the GA field with different sports people I knew I wanted to help people change their body composition and fitness and nutrition I didn't know what it looked like but I knew that's what I wanted to do but I let society tell me that I need to go into a normal job I need to go through the college system which I, I enjoyed um, and excelled in because I, I, I did well in that area of life but I went through that system because everybody said that I should and I listened to what society said and I love the Mark Twain quote that when you are si sitting on the side of the majority it's time to pause and reflect and there's nothing wrong with going the traditional route go to college do a nine to five go out on weekends if you're happy doing that then you've already won as I've mentioned earlier if there's something else you don't need to go the traditional path there's and I've been through it I have two degrees I have an honors degree in business and I have a teaching degree and I'm saying there are some people that that system won't work it may be that you go a completely alternative route you do a Henry Ford you do a Richard Branson people who failed at college failed at school and went on to become multi-billionaires you may have a different path but it all starts with knowing what it is that you want to set up and achieve and then getting that ladder against the right wall whether that's in fitness whether that's in life whether that's a job whether that's a relationship get your ladder against the right wall and then start climbing it from the bottom okay the next tip then is I would go back and I would tell myself be very very careful of the things you put into your mind I've long believed the thoughts become things and the things that you think about will lead to the actions that you take and the actions that you take will create the circumstances of your entire life. Had I had that piece of information at 17, 18 years of age, I think I probably would have excelled and achieved more than I would have at this stage of my life and I don't regret any of my path. I wouldn't change any of the things that could be seen as perceived regrets, things that I would look back on and go, I can't believe I did that or I wish it hadn't come to that they have all merged me into the character of who I am today and it's the same with everybody else every single circumstance that you've been through the horrible upbringing the horrible terrible relationship you had with your parents the worst relationship where you were completely mentally or even in a horrible case physically abused they're some of the strongest people on the planet have came out of those things. Oprah Winfrey had two abortions when she was 14. She was molested by her uncles and her family members and has gone on to become one of the most powerful people in the entire world because she used her obstacles as stepping stones to move forward. She didn't let it mold and become a victim. She used it as a way to propel herself into becoming a stronger version of herself. And you can do that with all aspects of your life. You know, it doesn't matter. When you reframe the bad things and you realize that everything that happens to you is something that you can learn from and move forward and be a better version of you, when you combine that with putting the right things into your head and leading those thoughts to the actions, to the circumstances, you can achieve anything. It's so funny and I've had this conversation with people like Paul who came through my mentorship program, other people I've worked with. Everything with the exception, and I'll use myself because it gives context to this answer, with the exception of being quite a strong natural speaker, everything else I have has been learnt. All the book stuff, all the knowledge, everything, the business, making money, a physique 
I don't consider myself genetically gifted by any stretch, but I'm a very strong worker in the gym and I understand biomechanics and how the body works and how nutrition works to refuel so that you're able to progress and recover and do it better. And step by step, you get ahead, not necessarily in fast spurts, but step by step, you get ahead. You kick the can, you move the stone, you do it every single day. And those things that you create habits out of will lead to who you become. But at the end of the day, it can be learned with the exceptions of the things that you're very naturally strong at. Some people will be incredible at art. Some will be amazing at music. Some will be really kinesthetic for sports. There's lots of different things that people are good at and you will have your own talent. You'll have your own area of genius. And I've spoken of this and I love the Einstein quote that if you judge a fish's ability to climb a tree, it'll go through its entire life thinking it's stupid. You have an area of genius, but that is on you. Everything else can be learned. When I talk about different businesses and I help people build their business, when I talk about people building their physiques and the GA players that I work with in terms of changing body composition and moving their performance to the next level to break into their senior team or get onto an inter-county panel or whatever that is, that's all learned because you choose what you put into your mind. The thoughts you put into your head will lead to the actions that you take and those actions will create your circumstances. This is why I'm so big on auditing your circle and the five people you spend the most time with auditing who you follow on social media. If you're following garbage on TV and garbage on social media and reading stupid fucking magazines that are telling you that, well, your partner may be cheating on you with cyber texting, what are you gonna look out for in your relationship? That's the way our brain is wired to work. What you see, what you focus on, where focus goes, energy flows. If you're reading garbage that's telling you that your partner's cheating on you by sexting somebody else, you're going to see that in your reality and then you're gonna have this causation of you acting and behaving a different way towards your partner and then he may, as a result, get more distant from you and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that you're like, oh, well, he went off with somebody else. And it may have started because of the thoughts you put into your head. And that's a very, very powerful way to think because you have control of that. You consume what you read, what you watch on TV, who you follow on social media is your choice. This is why I'm so big on auditing that circle because if there's people you're following on social media and they're making you feel bad about yourself, and I put myself into this bracket, if I've ever, on a consistent basis, made you feel bad about yourself for whatever reason, I'm like, unfollow me. Because if I'm not serving you becoming a stronger version of yourself, then I don't want any part of you becoming, feeling bad about yourself or you becoming a worse version of yourself. And you should hold everybody to that bar. If you're following those people and you feel horrible after you've read their content because they put up a thousand ab selfies or a thousand glute selfies and you're like, well, I don't look like that. You have to take control that you're putting those thoughts into your mind because you're following those people. The same with the magazines you read, the same with the TV shows you watch what you think you become. So you audit that, and if I could go back to my 18 year old self when I was putting negative and garbage into my brain, and I was spending time with people who aren't supporting me becoming the strongest version of myself, and I didn't know any better at the time, I would go back and I would tell myself, what you put into your mind will influence everything that you have. Your physical reality, the amount of money you have, the job you have, the physique you have, the health you have, the energy you have, all of these things are down to what you put into your mind. It's on you. you have to take on control ownership of that because as soon as you do that you have control and when you have control you make the decisions you know you are steering the ship and you can put it, that ship in any direction you want you can get that ladder and get at the bottom of the right wall and you can steer it in any direction you want but it all starts with consuming the right things and putting and the, the right thoughts in one. and this is a quote that i heard pretty recently um but it hit me like an absolute brick to my head was the greatest tragedy in life is meeting the person that you could have become. I know myself that my biggest thing that I'm trying to achieve is number one, being a great dad to my daughter because she's the number one person in my life and every decision I make is based out of how can I become that person? How can I become my daughter's go-to person like my mom has been for me? How can I become the person that I'm supposed to be? And the decisions I make are based out of that choice. It's the same with my business. My goal, and again, I'm looking in a financial aspect and the law of reciprocity, and I make a good living subjectively for me. I don't have a high standard of living, but it comes down to the reciprocity law of helping more people. That has always been number one for me. If you follow my social media, you see that I put out more free content than anybody for that reason. I'm trying to help and serve and I want the world to be better because I was here. And as cheesy as that sounds, I live my inner belief is on that. So when you live your life in accordance with who you could become, 
It's a very, very powerful mind shift in terms of making stupid choices that aren't supporting you. You know, at the end of the day, if you know the person you want to become, the mum you want to be, the dad you want to be, the person you want to be for your friends, how you want to show up for your family, the legacy you want to leave and whatever that looks like for you, if you bring yourself back to the biggest tragedy in life is meeting the person that you could have become. That will alter and will allow you to change direction in any area of your life because that quote is probably one of the most powerful things and hit me from my brain, it hit me in my gut and it hit me in my heart when I heard it. And if I could go back to my 18 year old self, I would say it to him. I'd be like, all the dicking you're doing, all the fucking around you're doing, that's fine. But just remember that the biggest tragedy you ever have is seeing the person that you could have become, whatever that looks like for you. Okay, so a bit of a lifestyle one. Again, I'm not sure how much this will land with people. I've tried to tie in a lot of my own life experience to give context to the answers. Um, but hopefully you guys get something from it regardless of what stage you're at in your life. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff there that I could have done with listening to 10, 11 years ago. Um, whether I would have been in a place to accept the information at that moment in time, that I also don't know. Um, but this is for the 18 year old, for the 25 year old, for the 36 year old that is just feeling a bit lost in any area um, and the advice that I can offer and hopefully that it helps you and supports you. For more information on me, you can head over to my website, www.brankeyfitness.com. My social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube is all Brian Key Fitness. My Snapchat, Brian K019. Instagram and Snapchat are definitely my two most active platforms at the minute. So definitely check me out on there, Brian K019. On Snapchat and Instagram, Brian Key Fitness. Um, and a massive thank you to Colm over at Voxonic who puts together all my episodes. Thanks for listening. Catch everyone soon.